In cloudology winds, first of all, what is wind? What is wind? Wind is moving air, that's all. But why shall air move? For example, air is there. Here, air is there. Why should air move? Air can be stationary, no? For example, take water. You pour water here. Will water stay here or move away? It depends. If there is a slope, water moves down the slope. If there is no slope, water will not move, right? Water is stationary. Similarly, air also. Generally, air does not move. But if there is a slope, air moves. Slope means not, you know, the slope of height. Slope in the pressure gradient. Pressure difference. For example, if the pressure is same in all these areas, same pressure, then the air, the air in this region will not move. It will stay there only. But if the pressure here is, say, some 900, pressure here is 800, pressure here is 1000, then the air from this point moves, the air, the air from this point moves towards this and again moves towards, understand? So air always moves from, move from high pressure to low pressure. This is called pressure gradient. Pressure gradient means slope in the pressure or maybe change in the pressure. Understand? Pressure gradient means what? Change in the pressure. For example, between these two points, the gradient is 100. Between these two points, gradient is 100. Between these two points, is 200. Pressure gradient, slope in the pressure. So, I think all have understood what is the meaning of a wind. Wind is flowing air or moving air. And air moves down the pressure gradient. Air moves only when there is change in the pressure, difference in the pressure. Okay. So, now, now let us uh, get into the winds in climatology. And again, I want to discuss about the pressure belts. See, of course, if you take the entire atmosphere, entire world, pressure is never same, it changes. But there are some major areas on the globe. If you take the earth, there are some major areas where you have to understand whether it is a high pressure area, low pressure area. There are some regions like that. We call them as pressure belt. For example, this is a belt, right? Belt, like that. On the globe, if you take the earth, Maybe somewhere here, there will be a low pressure belt, maybe high pressure belt. So, on the surface of the earth, in the atmosphere, there are some regions of high pressure and some regions of low pressure. Throughout the year, they stay like that. So, we will study about those pressure first. If we understand the pressure on the surface of the earth globally, it will be easy for us to understand the movement of winds. For example, if I tell you that winds move like this or winds move like this, to understand why winds move in this direction, you should understand what is the pressure along this region, pressure on this region. So, for that reason, I will discuss pressure regions in the world, also called as pressure belts in the world. Okay. And see, I might have told in the previous class the relation between temperature and pressure. For example, in this region, if high temperature is there, high temperature because of more insulation. For example, in a region, if insulation, insulation means incoming solar radiation, sun rays from the sun, if insulation is high in a region, in that region, temperature will be high higher temperature is higher why because of insulation sun's heat sun's rays are nothing but heat energy when heat energy is falling on this region the air in this region the air the air here will become hot and hot air is heavy or light light for example hot water also if you take a bucket of water for example do one thing you take some hot water in a bucket pour cold water Will hot water come up or stay in the bottom? Stay at the bottom. Hot water comes up. Why? Because hot water is lighter, cold water is heavier. Similarly, among the fluids, air is also a fluid. Water is also a fluid. Air, hot air is a lightweight. Cold air is heavy. So, because of sun's rays, the air in this region becomes very hot. 
and as hot air is a light weight, is a lighter weight, it moves away. All the hot air goes up. See, if the air is hot, will it stay there or afloat? It flows up. So air dissipates from there. So at any region, if temperature is very high, the air becomes lightweight and it disappears. Dissipates. As air moves away, as air moves away, in that region we have high pressure, low pressure. Friends, remember what is pressure first of all? Pressure is nothing but force per unit area. For example, here the pressure in this region is my weight per that area. Similarly, in the atmosphere, the pressure is because of the weight of the air. Air has some weight. Because of the weight of the air, there is some pressure. For example, here, more amount of air is there. Heavy air. So, in this region, pressure will be more pressure. In this area, light, hot air is there. Hot air. So, pressure will be less in this area. Because less air means less weight of the air. Less pressure. More heavy, cold air, high pressure. You understand? Now tell me, at any region, if you have high temperature, pressure will be low. Very good. At any region, if you have very low temperature, cold region, a region where air is very cool, cool air means heavy air. Heavy air will stay there only. It will not go away. It stays there. At such a region, pressure will be high. high. So, low temperature means high pressure. High temperature means low pressure. Now, in this class, please write running notes. Okay. So, write down, first of all, at a region having, at a region having high temperature, high temperature, Air, air will be hotter and lighter. Air will be warmer and lighter and rises up and dissipates and rises up and dissipates. Full stop. So, pressure is lower. Pressure is lower. Second point. At regions having low temperature, at regions having low temperature, the air is colder and heavier and stays down. The air is colder and heavier and stays down. Full stop. Hence, pressure is higher. Pressure is higher. Thus, Pressure is inversely proportional to temperature. Thus, pressure is inversely proportional to temperature. Friends, I think all have understood relation between temperature and pressure. What is pressure? Why pressure is created? How temperature is created? What is wind? How wind blows from point to point? I think you understood the basics, right? Now, let me explain. On this earth, surface of the earth, when I say earth, I include land, uh, land, water and atmosphere, all three. Earth means atmosphere, land, water, everything should be called earth. Earth is not just land, not just water. Okay. So now, when you take the earth, tell me, most of the time, in a year, most of the time, sun rays, more insulation will be there at which place of the earth? More insulation. Very good. Equator only. Along, if this is equator, equator is 0 degrees latitude. Along the equator, sun rays are more. Of course, see friends, if you take earth, if you take earth, see, if you take earth, this is equator. Okay. This is topic of this is topic of now sun does not stay only above the equator i think all of you know that sun see this is earth this is earth, this is earth okay this is equator sun moves like this sun never goes till polar area from equator it maximum goes to tropic of cancer and again comes back to tropic of capricorn sun moves only in this region from where to where 
Prabhu can answer to the world. Southernmost this region. So that's why this region is called tropical region. This region, no, this region is called tropical region. In tropical region, only sun always stays throughout the year. That's why more amount of heat energy is there only in the tropical area. Now, in the tropical area, comparatively, along the equator, sun stays for longer because it, it goes like this now. So, sun stays longer around the equator. For example, sun reaches tropic of Cancer in the month of June. In the month of June. Okay, so in on June 21st, sun is at, a, at the extreme north. Where is it? Tropic of Cancer. Sun is here. June. Now, in July, sun comes here. August, sun comes here. August. In September, again, sun comes exactly on the equator. Sun comes here exactly on September 23rd. Sun comes on equator. Okay. This we call as equinox. Equinox. Equinox means equal day and equal night. That means on September 23rd, when sun is exactly above equator, friends, remember, sun does not move actually, earth only moves. Sun is earth only moves. Earth will have revolution and other rotation. But as we are on earth, we are looking at sun. So we say sun rises in the east, sun sets in the west. So from our point of view, sun is moving, right? We should not think earth is moving. Generally, earth moves. But from our point of view, I am telling. From human beings point of view, sun is moving now. So, June, in the month of, on June 21st, sun is exactly where, you have to write the notes, running notes. I am not going to dictate this again. Because should I want to finish notes first quickly. So, I do not want to dictate the notes, write running notes. And if you miss running notes, I can view the recorded class also. That's why I record in the class, okay. See, now, on June 21st, we call it as summer, summer solstice, summer solstice, okay. Why? Because on that day, extreme summer, on that day, in the northern hemisphere, we will have longest day, longest day. In the month of, on September 23rd, equinox means equal day and night, means exact 12 hours day, 12 hours night. That means, if sun rises 6 a.m., it sets at 6 p.m. Or if sun rises 5 a.m., sets at 5 p.m. Exact 12 hours, exact 12 hours. So, equinox, equal day and night. September 23rd, okay. Then friends, September, June, July, October, then October comes here, November. On December, it exactly comes on to topic of Capricorn. So on December 22nd, it is also called as winter, winter solstice, winter solstice. On that day, sun reaches the extreme south, that is topic of Capricorn. On that day, when sun is here, northern hemisphere, countries like India, will have longest night. For example, 24 hours, India may have 14 hours night, whole 10 hours day, I am telling roughly. 14 hours night, 10 hours day means, 10 hours day means if sun rises at 7 a.m., it sets at 5 p.m. only. Sun rises at 7 a.m., sets at 5 p.m. So, 7 to 5 is some 10 hours. This 10 hours is day, remaining 14 hours is night. You understand? So, on the winter solstice day, northern hemisphere have Longest night, but on the same day, this this one twenty second, southern hemisphere we have longest day. If you take Australia, Australia is in southern hemisphere. For Australia, December twenty second will be longest day. For them, it is uh, summer solstice. For Australia, this is summer because sun is on Australia. No? This is Australia, right? Sun is on Australia. See, I am using the language summer, winter from India point of view. I mean from the northern hemisphere point of view. India, USA, UK, we countries which are in northern hemisphere. For us, for us, this is winter solstice, this is summer solstice. If you are from Australia, your language is different. If you are Australia or New Zealand or South Africa, you will say this is winter solstice, this is summer solstice. You understand? When sun is here, in northern hemisphere, we have summer. When sun is here, we have winter. Understand? 
Okay. So December 22nd, sun comes on to Tropic of Capricorn. Again, January comes here, January. February comes here. March, exactly on March, March 21st. Again, it comes on the equator. So tell me on which day sun is exactly above equator? March 20, 21st and 23rd. These two are called equinoxes. March is called vernal equinox. Vernal. Vernal equinox. March. September is called autumnal equinox. Autumnal. Autumn, no? Autumn equinox, vernal equinox. Both are equinox. On, on, on those two days, throughout the earth, any place you take, 12 days, 12 hours, day, 12 hours night. Okay. Now, I think you understood that sun is not exactly above equator. Sun keeps on moving. But mostly, most of the year, the hottest region is equator only. Okay. That's why, that's why on the equator, we have got high temperature. So, tell me along equator, for example, take from 5 degrees north to 5 degrees south. Take 5 degrees of this region. This is the hottest region. Okay. So, in this region, throughout the year, most of the day, most of the time, insulation is there. Now, tell me, is this region has high pressure or low pressure? Low pressure. Does this region has high pressure or low pressure? Low pressure? Very good, low pressure. That's why called as equatorial low pressure belt. Friends, this belt is called, this belt is called equatorial equatorial low pressure belt equatorial low pressure belt okay tell me is this pressure is this belt because of temperature or because of other reasons temperature only no just because it has got high temperature it became low pressure that's why we call this belt as thermally induced pressure belt we call it as what we call it as equatorial low pressure belt is called as thermally induced pressure belt thermally induced okay because it is formed due to high temperature that's all no other reason then take the polar area this polar area either the north pole or south pole will have extremely low temperatures very cool no? very cool areas because extreme low temperatures tell me low temperature cold air heavy air pressure will be high, high pressure so we call this as polar polar high pressure belt this one also polar high pressure belt Tell me, is this thermally induced or any other reason? Thermally only. Because of low temperature only, no. So, even polar high pressure belt is also because of thermal reasons. So, what are the thermally induced pressure belts? Equatorial low pressure belts, polar high pressure belt, right? But friends, we, just, we generally think that these are the only three pressure belts. I mean, equatorial, two polar. But there are four more pressure belts, which are not because of temperature, because of rotation of the earth. Are they rotating, no? Because they're rotating, what happens, you know? Due to rotation of earth, in this region, in this region, winds subside subside means if I, I, am, I am i am on this region let us say this is there. from the upper atmosphere winds are coming down tell me when winds are coming down like this one coming down this place high pressure low pressure high pressure understand when winds are coming onto a region because of more winds more air this pressure will, this uh, region will become high pressure so this is called subtropical high pressure belt subtropical because see for example this is 5 degrees north to 5 degrees south no this is 30 to 35 
30 degrees north to 35 degrees north. Similar here also, here also 30 degrees south to 30 degrees south to 35 degrees south. In the southern hemisphere as well as the northern hemisphere, both places 30 to 35 subtropical means outside the tropic. Tropic means what? Tropical means 23 and a half to 23 is tropical. Outside tropical is subtropical. So this is called subtropical region. It has got high pressure. That's why we call it as subtropical high pressure vent. Subtropical, subtropical high pressure belt. Friends, tell me, this subtropical high pressure belt is because of temperature? No, because of wind subsiding, winds coming from the top. That means it is because of dynamic reasons, dynamic reasons, because of rotation of the earth. Because of rotation of the earth, winds are subsiding. Because winds are subsiding, high pressure has developed over that region. So we call it as dynamically induced pressure belt. Dynamically induced pressure belt. Not only this one, even friends, a belt here. Here also is a belt. This is called subpolar. See, this is polar, no? Outside the polar is called as subpolar. This is from 60 degrees north to 65 degrees north. South also. In the south also, 60 degrees south to 65 degrees south, southern. So, these two are low pressure beds. You know why? Because in this region as well as this region, because of rotation of the earth, the wind rises up. Yeah, wind rises up. You understand? Tell me, in a region, in a region, if wind is rising up, is going up. So, in this place, there will be less amount of air. When there is less amount of air, pressure will be yes, low. So, write down, from 60 degrees to 65 degrees north, we have subpolar low pressure belt. We have subpolar low pressure belt because of rising wind. Subpolar low pressure belt because of rising wind. Whereas from 30 to 35, we have subtropical high pressure belt because of subsiding winds. Subsiding winds. Here we have subsiding winds. And here we have rising winds. And these two are dynamically induced pressure belts. Dynamically induced because of which reason? Rotation of the earth. Because of rotation of the earth, dynamic induced. And these two are because of high temperature, thermal, thermally induced pressure belts. Thus, we have seven pressure belts on the surface of the earth. Seven pressure belts. So, for more clarity, better clarity, I will discuss about. First of all, you should know why winds are rising here, why winds subsiding there, why? To understand that, first we will discuss about what are the winds blowing here, winds. Once we discuss about the winds, that will be easy for me to explain how those winds are rising, subsiding, how they are moving, will be easy. So, shall we discuss about winds now? Yeah. One more rising wind, see. In this region, 60 to 65 degrees north and south, we call it as subpolar, subpolar sub region outside the polar. In these two regions, what happens, you know, wind rises up. For example, I am standing here, no, we are all here. Let us say we are staying in the subpolar region. From this area, wind goes up. Tell me, as winds are going up, as winds are going up, on the surface of the earth, will there be more air, less air? Yes. Less air. When air is less, the weight of the air also will be less. When weight of air is less, pressure will be less. That's why low pressure. Understand? That's why low pressure. And see here, one more thing I should tell you is that, see this belt that I am wearing, 
is you know, completely there. There are no breaks in the belt. But pressure belt is not so continuous. There will be breaks in the pressure belt. For example, along the equator, there won't be high pressure continuously equally high pressure not be there. This will be very high pressure, again some gaps, again high pressure, again some gaps, again high pressure. So high pressure exists in the form of some cells. That means though for the sake of the diagram, I have drawn like this. I have drawn continuously. In reality, there are continuous. There will be some breaks. For example, subtropical high pressure belt. Just it will be some one or two place rest of. But in southern hemisphere, it may be continuous. Understand? Compared to northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere belt is continuous. For example, subpolar low pressure belt, no? It will be like this. Northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere continuous, no break. You know why? Friends, very good. Land and water distribution. Friends, if you take the world map, Africa, Saudi Arabia, India, Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, Philippines, South America, North America, okay? The equa equator exactly passes like the equator. Is the equator. See, above the equator, see most of the land is above equator. Here, see water, land, water, land, again water, land, water. But southern hemisphere below, if you come below this one, there's only water. See, is there any land? Only water. When there's only water, uniform temperature. But if you have land, water, land, water, see when sun rays fall on land and water, I already told you, land becomes hotter quickly than water. For example, at, at afternoon 2 o'clock, you go to temple, you walk in the temple. If you are on the floor, it will be very hot, in the water very hot, floor only. Floor is very hot. Because when sunrise fall, no, land becomes hot quickly than water. Similarly, in the night time or winter season, when there is no sun, when cooling happens, no, land becomes cool quickly. Land becomes very cool. Water will not be that much cool. Water will not be. Okay. This is called, this concept is called differential heating of land and water. This concept is called as differential heating of and friends. I told you in one of my previous classes, there are a few reasons for this. Why land and water do not get heated or cool at the same pace? There are some reasons. For example, one reason I told you, water has depth. If sun rays fall on the land, all the heat energy stays on the land only. But if sun rays fall in the water, it penetrates. So the energy has to be distributed throughout the water. That's why land becomes heat quickly. Similarly, I told you, I told you that specific heat, specific heat of water is more. That means, if you take one gram of water, to raise the temperature of one gram of water, for example, water is at 23 degrees centigrade, land also 23 degrees. Now, you want to heat it to make it 24, 24. Water to make it from 23 24, you have to supply more heat. Land from 20 to 24, less heat is enough. This is called specific heat actually. Specific heat means the amount of heat energy you have to supply to one gram of material to increase temperature by one degree. That is more for water. Water needs more heat. So that's why water does not heat quickly. Specific heat of water is more. Also, one more reason I told you, third reason, more reason is, see, let us say you supplied heat to the water, some of the energy, heat energy will be taken by water vapor, though when you are heating the water, you see, heating the water, water becomes vapor and goes away, so the heat you are supplying is going out, it's not staying in the water, because the water vapor. Whereas heat, whatever heat you are supplying to the land, no, it stays there only, it does not go out. The heat in the land does not go out. Understand? Similarly, one more is I told you is movement. Movement of water. If we, the sun is falling on the water, if water is heated, there is water around that now. There is movement of water. Movement of water. 
so the heat will not stay there it will be distributed land land will not move no what heat is there in the land stays there only so these are the different reasons why we call differential heating of land and water land water do not heat at, at the same pace cooling also land gets heated quickly land gets cooled quickly that you should know now now come to this point here when you have water land water land when you are like that the temperature is not same so can pressure be same no but here only water so same temperature same pressure that's why pressure belts you can write it if you want in southern hemisphere pressure belts are more continuous right down in southern hemisphere <coughs> in southern hemisphere pressure belts are more continuous than the northern hemisphere <coughs> than that of the northern hemisphere because of unequal distribution of land and water in the northern hemisphere and domination of water in southern hemisphere and domination of water in southern hemisphere and friends i have a question for you these principles are created with the imagination that yeah with the imagination that if sun is always above equator sun is always here always above equator then equatorial low pressure belt will always be on equator but does sun stay here or sun moves so when sun goes to in the month of may and june is sun above equator or at all cancer so when sun is above tropic of cancer will low pressure be there on equator or here low pressure sure. obviously that's it in this diagram i told you in this diagram that sun is mostly above equator above equator so equator has high insulation high sun rays so high temperature that's a low pressure belt but this is not same throughout the year no if sun is always above equator then this is exactly correct but sun is moving now when sun is moving will the pressure belt say stay or will they also move yes. very good how are you to answer that it's a very good answer actually okay friends see so pressure belts also move so shall we draw a diagram of movement of pressure belts yeah let me draw a diagram of can you third side what about the third side friend whatever see now let me explain you how the pressure belts move along with the sun so tell me three months let us take the month of september and june and december okay first let us take the month of september oh this is equator equator okay now in the month of september we can take 23rd or whatever september when Sep september march also month of march also when sun is exactly above the equator above equator we have i will draw low pressure belt l equatorial low pressure belt is here okay and polar high pressure belt is here <laughs> subtropical high pressure belt is here subpolar low pressure belt is here here also this is a this is a diagram which we are drawing in the month of or march now let us take the month of june in the month of june, what happens in month of june sun does not stay near equator sun stays on pro cancer so where is low pressure belt the low pressure belt will be shifting so all the belts will shift like this take all the belts shift to the north because sun is not on equator no so low pressure goes here see low pressure goes here now 
you no more call it as equatorial low pressure belt. If you want, you can call, but it is low pressure belt. It's not exactly on equator. It moved away from equator. It moved to the north. Why? Because of movement of sun. Thermally induced pressure belt. Thermally induced. It depends on temperature. So it depends on sun. Now, as it moves, this will also push it up. It also moves up. This also push it up. Now, this polar high pressure belt, no, becomes very small. It, polar high pressure belt cannot push it up. Can it go outside the earth? It stays inside the earth only, no. So, it becomes smaller, that's all. But these belts, you know, see, this high pressure belt, high pressure, it goes up. So, here you have high pressure belt, moves up. And low pressure belts also move up. And this poor hyper belt becomes very large. So in the month of June, the southern polar high pressure belt expands, becomes very big. Northern polar high pressure belt gets contracted, becomes very small. Understand? Now let's take the month of which one shall we take? Very good, December. Let's take December. In December month, what happens is, where is the sun? Sun will be above top of top. Very good. In December, sun will be here. Here. So low pressure belt will be this low pressure belt will move down. Low pressure belt will move down. Because along with the sun, the pressure belts will move along with the sun. So this will be the low pressure belt. It comes down. Because of that, all belts will come down. High pressure belt will be here. High pressure belt. This low pressure belt also will come down. And high pressure belt also will stretch. So the northern polar high pressure belt expands in the month of December. And these belts now will move down. The high pressure belt moves down. Low pressure also still moves down. And high Southern polar high pressure belt will be contracted, becomes very extremely small in the month of December. Okay? This is what we call as movement of pressure belts. We call this as movement of pressure belts. Movement of pressure belts. Okay. <coughs> Do you know what they call this? Uh, do you know what this they call this high pressure belt as? Tell me, anybody tell me what is the latitude of this pressure belt, high pressure belt, subtropic high pressure belt? Latitude is 32, 35. 35. Subtropical high pressure. Do you know? See, if you look at the world map, where is the world map? Yeah, look at the world map. It exactly falls here, this region this region you understand in this region trading was very high in those in the olden days also trading was very high from from you know italy you know sorry from italy here italy is here from italy italy means southern europe southern europe italy from italy people used to you know move they used to come to india like this okay even from africa there was trade from china this is china china from China, there was trade. So, in this region of high pressure belt, there was trade between China and Italy and even you know, um, India. So, these traders, no traders, for example, this earth, let us say this is high pressure belt. This is a subtropical high pressure belt. Let us say the traders are moving from point A to point B, they are coming like this. Exactly when they come to this high pressure belt, no? For example, ship is there. They are, let us say, they are carrying horses. They are bringing horses to India. Actually, horse is not a native of India. Horse used to come from Central Asia. Horse used to come. So, there are trade of horses. So, the ship full of horses. They used to come with the ship. Exactly, the traveling, traveling, travel. Exactly when they come to subtropical high pressure belts, no? The winds are subsiding, the winds come down. So high pressure, ship will, ship may sink, ship may actually drown into the sea. 
to avoid that, what they will do? Take some horses, throw in the ocean. See, when a ship is sinking, what will you do? Reduce the load, reduce the weight, because pressure is more known. So they will throw some horses, and again they will cross the ship. They will cross the, once they, for example, when they cross it, again it will normal. But at the time the horses come in, I do not know. When the horses swim from there to here and come again, we do not know. But generally, they will throw some horses in the subtropical high pressure belts during the horse trade. That's why these latitudes, these are 30 to 35 degrees north, only north, not south. Trade used to be there in the north. So, 30 to 35 degrees north latitudes are called as horse latitude. Horse. They are called horse attitude. Why? Because you understood now. I told you why it's called horse attitude. Okay? Friends, now, let us know as you understood the pressure belts. I think all of you understood the pressure belt. The movement of the pressure belt. Why they are not continuous. Why they are created. Now, once you understood the pressure, you can go for the winds. I told you, you know, winds. Today's class is winds. So, to understand the winds, you should know the pressure. Why? Because winds occur only when there is pressure difference. Now, let us take the winds. Okay, which color do you want for the winds? Yeah, as many as most people said blue. Well, no friends, listen. Tell me, is this high pressure or low pressure belt? This one. This is a low pressure belt. This is high. This is low. This is high. High, low, high. Tell me, winds go from high to low pressure, low to high pressure. So. Winds actually want to move high to low. So, winds want to move like this. High to low. Here, winds in this region, winds will move from high to low. You understand? In this region, winds move like this. And in this region, in this region also. So, winds always blow from, from so I, with the blue color, I am drawing the movement of winds. With the black color, I have drawn only pressure belts. With the blue, I am drawing the movement of winds. So, winds actually want to move like this, from high to low. But, what happens, you know, friends? There is a concept called as Coriolis force. There is a concept called as Coriolis force. So, what is this Coriolis force? Transcurious force means wind moving in the northern hemisphere. For example, I am wind. I am moving in the northern hemisphere. I cannot move straight like this. I will deviate to my right hand side. I will go towards my right hand side. In northern hemisphere. In southern hemisphere. In southern hemisphere, if a wind is moving, the wind will move towards its left hand side like this. This is Coriolis force. So you can write down simply, Coriolis force is the movement of wind towards its right hand side. Coriolis force is movement of wind towards its right hand side <coughs> in northern hemisphere <coughs> and towards its left hand side <coughs> in southern hemisphere. Coriolis force. Friends, Coriolis force is not a force. It's called as a force. It's not a force. It is just a deviation. Coriolis force is just a deviation of any moving object. It can be a wind, it can be a ballistic missile, missile also. For example, if you want to launch a missile from India to some other country in the northern hemisphere, when you launch a missile, no, if you if you plan to launch a missile like this, it won't go exactly in the straight line. It will deviate towards its right hand side. The southern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, if Australia won't launch a missile or some other country, if they launch it in the direction, it slightly moves to left hand side. For example, if they want to launch like this, it goes like this. So you have to calculate. While launching missile, you have to calculate. For example, you are here, you want to launch missile here, you have to launch in this, in this direction. So it will go and follow the place trajectory. 
those calculations will be done. Actually, calculations done based on several factors. For example, the momentum. What is momentum? Mass into speed. You know momentum? Momentum of any object is mass into speed or mass into velocity. Also, Coriolis, friends, actually, why is this Coriolis force? You want to understand? It is because of difference in the rotational speed of the earth. For example, this is not very important. I'll finish in two to three minutes. Just try to understand. If you don't understand, so okay. Nobody in UPSC they'll ever ask you these kind of questions. Okay, just for understanding why Coriolis is force. I'm telling you, this Earth take equator. Equator say a take a point here in equator. Here take a point B. Here take a point C. Okay. Now exactly in 24 hours. Earth makes, Earth, Earth makes one rotation, rotation, next 24 rotation. In every 24 hours, Earth makes 360 degree rotation. So, point A, today morning 9 a.m., point A is here. By tomorrow morning 9 a.m., point A will be yes. same place. So, this point A will again come back. Point B, come back, point C. So, every point, a, B and every point within 24 hours, how many degrees does it cover? So degrees are same only, but distance is not same. No. Is this distance same as this same as this? No. They cover same degree, but distance is not same. Distance is different, completely different. Okay, for example. How do you calculate speed? Speed is distance by time. Now I will take time of 24 hours. So, I will say speed of point A, speed of point B, speed of point C, A, B, C, speed. What is the speed? Speed is distance of point A by time is 24 hours only. Distance of point B by time is 24. Speed of C is? Let us say this distance is 1000, for example. This is 1000, this is 600, this is 400, let us say. So, A covers how much distance? 24 hours? 1000 only. B covers? 600 only in 24 hours. C covers 400 only. So time is same, but distance is different. So tell me which has more speed. A. Yeah. Okay. So on the Earth, but tell me one point. When Earth when Earth is rotating, Earth is rotating, will only land and water move or atmosphere also moves? Atmosphere also moves. Atmosphere also attached to the Earth. Attached. Just like in the postal, you send a post with a envelope. When you throw it, will only letter go or envelope also goes envelope. Yeah. Attached, right? Like that, atmosphere is attached to the earth. So atmosphere also rotates. Now tell me, atmosphere is air. In rotation, tell me, throughout the earth, speed is same or different, different speeds? Yeah. Different. At equator, speed is very high. At equator, speed is 1024. Here, 624. Here, 424. Understand? You don't understand, no? Okay. So speeds are different. So what happens? You know, see, if rotation of the Earth leads to same speed of all the air, all the same speed, no? Then if you launch a missile, it will go the same, same direction. But speed is different. Missile is going where? In the air or on the on the land? So in the air, here the air speed is different. When it comes here, air speed is different. When it goes there, air speed is different. Different different speeds, no. So can missile go in the same speed? It's the same uh, direction? No. So Korea is for nothing but any moving object in the atmosphere cannot go in straight line. Why? Because atmosphere is moving at different different speeds. So any object cannot go with the same direction. That's how Coriolis force come in the picture. But that's not required actually. So understand I'm telling you. That's why in the northern hemisphere, any wind cannot go straight. It will deviate to the in southern hemisphere. Any moving object or wind moves towards towards listen. For example, I have a question. Now I am in southern hemisphere. Where I am? Now I am going like this. I am here. I am wind. Now I have to go to this side. This side. Now I am southern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere. I have to move towards this side. Now I am southern hemisphere only. I have to move towards. Understand? Direction doesn't matter. It will go different side. For example. In southern hemisphere, this is actually is a wind. It moves towards. It goes like this. This is a true direction. 
For example, some wind wants to come like this. How it will go towards? Its left hand side. It's its left hand side. You have to travel with the wind. This is a wind, no? This is a wind, no? Here, travel like this. To the hand side. Understand? You have to go with the wind. There is a very good book called Gone with the Wind. You can read that book. Very good book. Not for UPSC generally. Okay. Now, and see. So, in northern hemisphere, towards right hand side. Similarly. Okay. Okay. Now, I think all of you understand what is Coriolis force now. Is it clear Coriolis force? Yes. Actually, friends, Coriolis force is proportional to mass of the object, speed of the object, and the angle sin theta. Which angle? Latitude. Theta is a latitude angle. For example, Coriolis force at point B, Coriolis force point C. Where high, high Coriolis force will be there? For example, at B, the latitude is, is equal to 0. B, let us say 30 degrees north. C is 60 degrees north. Now, Coriolis force at B will be mv into sin 30. At C will be mv into sin 60. Which is more? Why is sin 60? Sin 60 is more. Sin 60 is more. Sin, sin, you know, sin, sin 0 is 0. Sin 0 is 0. Sin 90 is 1. So it increases from 0 to 1. Sin 0, sin increases. For example, Coriolis force is maximum where? Polar area. 90 degrees north. Or south also, whatever. 90 Highest Coriolis force will be at the? Well, zero Coriolis force where? Equator. So you can write down Coriolis force proportional to mass of, why I am telling mass, you know, for example, you throw a small plastic ball, you throw a very large iron ball, throw both of them. Now, which will have more deviation? Iron ball. Iron ball will have more mass. So more, friends, more Coriolis force means more deviation. Understand? For example, see, I am throwing a small missile, I am throwing a large missile. This is a small missile. This is a large missile. Small in the which hemisphere do you want? South or North Hemisphere missile? North Hemisphere, huh? okay. Now North Hemisphere, see, when you uh, launch a missile, small missile, it deviates slightly like this only. Large missile deviates like this. You understand? Coriolis force is deviation. If the mass is more, deviation is more. Speed also. If something is moving slowly, you know, it deviates slightly. If something is moving fast, no, it deviates more. So, mass, speed and angle also. For example, if you are launching a missile from B, see, from B, from C, at B, deviation will be less. At C, more deviation. Why? Angle. Angle. Do you understand now what is Coriolis force? Is Coriolis force clear to all of you? Anyone has doubts on Coriolis force? Now, I will come back to the winds. Now, you will understand the winds, friends. Now, you will understand the winds better. Now, blue color are, are, are all wrong. Blue color, I have drawn the way winds want to move. But because of Coriolis force, they cannot move straight now. They will deviate now. Now let us draw the real direction of winds. Which color do you want? Huh? Which color do you want? Okay. As more people told red, I will for example. Okay. Now, all of you, I want all of you to draw it yourself in the rough paper. I want to say right, right or wrong. Right, I want to say right, right or wrong. All of you, the real direction of the winds. By keeping in the mind the Coriolis force definition, all of you shall draw the true direction of the winds. And after drawing, please raise your hand. I want to see how many of you can draw it rightly, correctly. No need to draw beautifully, just draw some random figure, right or I can draw beautifully. I want to see whether I am uh, drawing right or wrong. Some students are drawing the pressure bills very beautifully, <coughs> like this. Draw some straight lines and start drawing the pressure, uh, direction of winds. Okay, let's see. Here, 
these winds are in northern hemisphere and Coriolis force will deviate the wind in northern hemisphere towards its right, right hand side. So they will move towards the right hand side, friends, not your right hand side, not your right hand side, the right hand side. The means, for example, wind is coming down, right? You also go with the wind like this, see, you also go with the wind like this now. What is the right hand side? This one. This one, right? This direction. So, this is the true direction of the winds. Red color. Okay? Now, here, these winds. It will move towards the right hand side. What is the right hand side? Uh, let's say this is a wind. This is a wind, no? Right hand side. So, this is the direction of wind. Tell me, this is a very important question, listen carefully. Where will there be more deviation? For these winds or these winds? Let's say they are called A winds, they are B winds. Which are more deviation? Yes. Very good. B will have more deviation because of sin theta. Angle is more, higher latitude now. That's why you observe carefully, I have drawn some deviation. Here I have drawn more deviation. Observe, more deviation. Now come here again. Polar is uh, polar winds. Polar winds because they are coming from the pole, no? Polar winds come from the pole. Now, these winds will move towards their right hand side. What is that? Right hand side, right only. But which side? Show with the hand. Very good. This is the right hand. This one is the right hand. You go with the wind. I know that some of you have drawn this wrongly. I observed just now. Okay. So, you go with the wind, friend. This is a wind now. You go with the wind. With the wind and move towards right hand side. Think from the wind direction point of view. You should not you should not always think from your point of view. Sometimes think from this point of view also. Okay. Now come to the southern hemisphere. In southern hemisphere, deviation will be towards left hand side because of Coriolis force. Left hand side. Tell me for this or left hand side? Very good. This is the true direction of winds. Now here for these winds, left, left hand side. For these winds now, these winds, left hand side means this side. So, we have to draw like this. For these winds, so these are the, the red color is the true wind direction. Blue color is wrong. Red color is correct. So, now I have explained you the winds also, right? Now, these winds are called planetary winds. You know why? Because they are there throughout the planet. No. Enter planet, they are there. Planetary winds. Okay. Now, do you want me to draw another diagram because it's very confusing or okay? <laughs> I always like that all wrong. Friends, if this is the earth, and if this is the equator, equatorial, I draw it as equatorial low pressure belt. And this is subtropical high pressure belt. This is subpolar low pressure. This is subpolar. Okay. Similarly here also, subtropical high pressure, polar low pressure, sorry, subpolar low pressure and polar high pressure. Now the winds actually, I'm drawing the wind direction now. The wind moves from here to here. And these winds are coming from where to where? From this point to this point. Let me see. If you want to draw directions, this is north, this is south, this is east, this is west. This is called as northeast. This is northwest, southeast. Yeah. Now these winds are coming like this. See, coming like this, right? Coming from the northeast, that's why they are called as northeast winds. And I told you, you know, this will help in the trade. I told you, this is the region. Actually, if you look at the world map, world map, this is a region where most of the trade used to occur. Trade ships used to go trade in the ocean. And friends, you know, the ships you know in those days, in those days, there were no powerful engines. You have to go with the wind only. You have to try, you should try to align your ship in direction of wind so that you can go faster. That's why these winds are called trade winds. Which winds? Only these winds are called trade winds. They are called northeast trade winds. Northeast trade winds. Now, here the wind direction is towards left hand side. I told you. 
like this in direction and these winds are coming from coming like this coming from here southeast so these are called southeast southeast trade winds and here high to here also i told you they move towards the right hand side now they move like this to right hand side and these are almost almost they flow from west from west from west they flow towards east so it's always always for example if you are from uh, lucknow let us say from lucknow you came to hyderabad now are you called as lucknow girl hyderabad girl generally name people from where they come from not where they are right now where they come from similar winds also winds also we name them from where they come from we don't name them based on the destination so they are coming from the west to east so we call as westerlies okay so these winds are called westerlies even here also here also high pressure to low pressure southern hemisphere due to coriolis force they move towards their left hand side you know how east here also from west to east from west to east here also west to east so this so is also called as westerly only if you want to call something as easterly is please call these things here see high pressure to low pressure these these things are called as polar easterly because they move from east to west mostly here also high pressure low pressure actually they want to move like this if the coriolis is forced they move how do they move yeah, yeah very good because southern hemisphere southern hemisphere they move from they move towards the left hand side so here also they go from east to west so they are called as polar polar easterlies but these are the 1 2 3 4 5 6 order six types of winds these winds are called planetary winds they are called as why because they occur to the planet these are also called as primary winds primary means most important winds see on the earth there are many types of winds but they are the most important type primary winds they are called primary winds they are also called as prevailing winds they are also called as prevailing winds they prevail almost throughout the year they prevail prevailing winds they are also called as invariable winds <laughs> they are also called as invariable that means most they don't vary say almost same direction throughout the year almost same direction almost invariable means they don't vary invariable so these winds are called as this polar easterlies westerlies and trade winds these three are called as primary winds or planetary winds or prevailing winds or invariable winds you should know about these winds now i will come back to the previous concept of some of you might have might be having a doubt right in subtropical high pressure why winds are subsiding in subpolar low pressure why winds are rising why some of you may have the doubt no no let us discuss about this i'll come back again okay see so now I'll draw. I'll try to draw the diagram differently. For example, before that, before that, I want to slightly explain. Try to see. These winds are coming like this. North is trade winds. These are coming like this, right? When they both come like this, they will collide. Collide. Friends, when two winds collide, will they go into the earth or they come go up? Go up only, no. When two winds collide, they'll go. For example, you try to hold a water pipe. Where the water is coming like this. When they both hit no water, will the water go back again like this, or will they spill out? Spill out. Similarly, when the winds collide, they rise up because there is no place to go down. No, earth is there. Can they go into the earth? No, no. So, when these two winds collide, they go up. They go up winds. Similarly, here the winds are going away. Again, here these two winds are colliding. So, whenever winds collide, they go up. So I think you understood that. Now with that understanding, let me draw the same diagram differently. And this diagram which I am going to draw now is here. Now winds. Let us draw with uh, 
blue color winds okay winds i will write blue see friends i told you know at equator at equator because of more insulation more sun rays air is very hot hot air is lightweight heavy weight you only lightweight so light air goes up or comes down goes up. so at equator at equator the air goes up from anything from the earth a stone water if you throw will it keep on going up or will it come down any object having a mass cannot escape the gravity of the earth unless you push it with the escape velocity rockets know they go with 11.2 km per second that is different at that speed if you if you throw a stone at that speed 11.2 it can escape the gravity go outside the earth but most of the objects when you throw up they have to come down because of gravitational pull of the earth similarly air is no exception air is also gas air also has got some weight do you know air has got some weight because the, because of the weight of the air only we have pressure atmospheric pressure otherwise where is the pressure okay so air also as going up it has to come down but after going up cannot come down in the same direction no because see still the air is coming up now so the air just gone up cannot come to come down the same direction it will go out for example take a pipe of water water pipe put the pipe like this let the water go up with the nozzle out of the water goes up will it come like this or will it come like this yes. right fountains example any fountain when the water goes it will and then come down understand it will diffuse and then come down so here after the air goes up air is also like water different both are fluid so so it actually comes like this and then comes down air comes like this and then comes down understand now after coming down after coming down for example take some water pipe put like this and the water come down after the water will again split, split right so this will split like this you understand here also this wind will now observe carefully from the polar area i told you know in polar area the wind is very heavy high pressure because of very cool polar areas are extremely cool high pressure because high pressure the wind will go away from polar to this area high pressure here also in high pressure wind will go like this friends we are this is earth we are standing here all the air that i am drawing here see these arrows they are called surface air movement surface because it is on surface no this is called upper atmosphere see this means are there no this wind. example this wind is there no this wind this is upper air this is upper air not surface air this means are surface air so i am discussing about the air movement on surface as well after air goes up an upper atmosphere how does it move both i am discussing you should understand both okay now what do we feel do we feel this air or that air surface air only feel we don't feel the upper atmospheric air circulation we don't feel it in fact upper atmospheric air is not studied till second world war only after second world war only geographers start studying because during second world war the usage of the airplanes has increased see till you feel it you can't study it no so when the aircrafts started moving no in second world war during the time airplanes increased no then they felt the airplanes felt the wind then they thought okay there is some wind movement in the upper atmosphere also okay anyhow now tell me when two winds collide collide it will Wow. rise up so it rises up like this after rising up it will diverge diverge it will diverge like this we call it as diverge diverge diverging air will again come down see again comes down diverging air here also you have diverge it's also diverge but this is <coughs> friend this is converge here winds are converging and coming down see here at this point these two are converging coming down here they are diverging now see the same here 
these wings are what have they are okay, yes converging very good they are uh, right converging what are right converging converging how to converging they will rise up and out here they will diverge and come down diverge and come down friends always observe carefully when there is convergence on surface of the earth there will be divergence on upper atmosphere for example here you have convergence so here there will be divergence here there is divergence See here there is divergence so here there is convergence so always remember surface air movement is exactly opposite to the upper atmosphere movement, the opposite movement also you can see this wind is moving like this now see exact now how it is moving like this opposite this wind is moving like this now see exactly it is moving so opposite whatever is happening on surface you know exactly opposite happens on the top so if you want you can write down this is uh, uh, convergence not required this is uh, divergence this is convergence whatever if you want you can write down okay so now i hope all of you understood why the wind is moving like this now whoever have a doubt now i told you some 20 minutes back that equatorial low pressure belt and polar these are thermally induced thermally whereas subtropical high pressure belt is dynamically why it high pressure see is it high pressure because of low temperature no this rain actually this is 30 degrees altitude no at 30 degrees altitude is high or low generally high temperature no high temperature means pressure should be what low pressure but what is the pressure here <coughs> high that means it's not because of temperature <coughs> dynamical induced why because subsiding air i told you no subsiding at the time you don't understand no why subsiding you understand at the time i told you no subtropical has high pressure because subsiding now you understand why subsiding now you understand no why subsiding that's why i spent some time i have i have to explain few concepts to come to this point at this point i hope all of you understood why this is uh, uh, this, this high pressure belt why wind is subsiding here also here this is also dynamically induced only friends what is this latitude 60 degrees north is it cool or hot cool very low temperature no low temperature means pressure should be what pressure high pressure no but see here low pressure this is not because of temperature this is because of rising wind dynamically induced but why wind is rising at that i don't understand now now i think you understood now wind is rising because of convergence now i hope all of you understood the pressure belts as well as direction of winds clearly only if you understand these two we can move to the next topic called as atmosphere circulation atmosphere circulation means in the atmosphere the air keeps on circulating like a cell for example see here see how it is moving what is this a cell like a cell circulation cell this is actually observed by somebody called Hadley somebody called his name is Hadley observed this so we call it as Hadley cell, Hadley cell. He observed actually. Similarly, look at this. How it's circulating? See, this is clockwise. No, see, <laughs> clockwise. No, Hadley cell. This is. This is found by somebody called Ferrell. He found this is called as. See this one. It's more like this now. Friends, are you able to understand what I'm telling? Like a circulation. This is the polar area, no polar region. So it's called polar cell so like that the point is here also Hadley cell, Ferrell cell, Polar cell these cells that means atmosphere is circulating see atmosphere is circulating atmosphere on the this is the earth and the atmosphere around the earth the atmosphere is always circulating continuously this is called atmosphere circulation and there are how many cells are there Three Hadley fell for three cell, so it's called tricellular. It's called, and this is happening along the longitudes. So observe carefully. You take the Earth, 
Will I will draw this diagram once again. See this diagram. The wind comes like this, rise, goes up again. Come see like this. See, sun is for example equator. No equator. No the wind goes up, goes like this, falls down again. Come so along the longitude. See these are the longitudes of the earth. Longitudes circles along the longitude like this here like this longitude from high pressure goes low pressure rises up again see if the wind if the circulation along the latitude like this that is different but but the circulation is not happening along the latitude is circulation happening like this along the latitude no it's happening like this along long like this like this along the longitudes that's why it's called it's called meridional tricellular meridional atmosphere circulation right down it's called tricellular meridional atmospheric circulation I think all of you understood what is a wind, right? You understood what is pressure, right? And you understood what pressure belts, right? And you understood how, how the movement of pressure belts, movement, you understood, right? You understood what are the planetary winds, right? You understood what is Coriolis force, no? Coriolis force, you understood Coriolis force? And you understood tricellular, meridional, Circle, you understand? You understand the feral cell, Hadley cell, you understood coral cells, all the cells you understood? Okay. If you understand all these things, then we can go on to the next topic that is other types of winds. Till now I explained you primary winds. So actually, if I have to if I have to divide the winds broadly, I will divide them like this. See, I will divide the winds into these types carefully. Primary winds. Secondary winds and primary winds means the most important winds. They are the planetary winds. They are the what are the planetary winds? Trade winds, trade winds and westerlies and polar easterlies. These three are called, uh, called planetary winds. They are also called as invariable winds. For example, secondary winds means what you know? Monsoon winds. Monsoon. I will discuss. I'll come to the monsoon now. Next with monsoon winds only. You discuss. Is there, they are also called as seasonal winds. Monsoon also called seasonal winds. Or even cyclonic winds. I should discuss cyclone. Cyclone is a very important topic. That's what I'm telling you. you know, if I finish the winds, 50% of, of uh, climatology is over. For example, till now I finished all this part of the winds. Now I have discussed about monsoon and cyclones. Also, tertiary winds means what you know? Local winds. Local winds, winds only in Delhi, winds occurring only in North Africa, winds occurring only in Western USA, some regions, small, small local winds. Local winds, even the along the coast, along the ocean, no, there will be air breeze, there will be sea breeze and land breeze. Along the ocean, if you stand on the beach, in the daytime, you feel one kind of breeze. In the evenings and night, one kind of breeze. Sea breeze, land breeze. We will discuss about those things also. Sea breeze and land breeze. Sea breeze, land breeze. Mountain valley breeze. If you are standing on a mountain, in the daytime, you find winds going one direction. In nighttime, winds in other direction. So they are called valley, wind, valley breeze and mountain breeze. We call it as valley breeze and uh, Local winds means, for example, Sirocco, Harmattan, Blizzard, we'll discuss, Lu, we'll discuss all those winds. So, there are tertiary winds. Secondary winds means monsoon, cyclone, secondary winds. Actually, secondary winds are also called as variable winds. They are variable. That means they are not same. They will change. Monsoon, what are monsoon winds? For example, in India, in the summer season, I mean from the May, June, July, August, September, that time, you have winds in the southwest, southwestern monsoon. In November, December, January, northeast monsoon, wind direction changes. It's called variable. Variable means changing winds. Understand? They are invariable winds. They are variable winds. 
but broadly primary second tertiary winds classification i think all of you understood the primary winds right completely parallel is completely understood now as understood the plant winds you know based on the plant winds let us study three types of climatic regions example mediterranean climate example friends is very important listen carefully mediterranean climate what is mediterranean region mediterranean region means for example uh, around 35 to 40 degree uh, latitude 35 to 40 degree means c but europe in europe see it will be there in america also north america also but i am trying all europe this region This is from 35 to 40 degree north. This is called Mediterranean region. Mediterranean region. This region. Mediterranean region. This region has one very unique kind of climate. You know why? Because of planetary winds only. Because of shifting of pressure belts. Let me explain how it happens. It is a very interesting thing. Observe here. Again, I will draw blue color, uh, red color this time. They will blow from subtropical high pressure to <coughs> equatorial pressure belt. There are the winds summer season now let's say winter season okay friends in winter season no the bells will move down i told you in winter season sun is here low pressure belt also move down see low pressure belt comes here low pressure belt comes here so high pressure belt also come down subtropical high pressure belt comes down subtropical low pressure belt will be here subtropical low pressure belt and polar belt will be very big at the time polar belt, okay now tell me the maiden region is the same place only the region will not change now the europe will not change it will be there only but what are the winds between subpolar low pressure belt subtropical high water the winds very good <coughs> here you have westerly winds do you understand what i'm talking about so in summer season what winds are blowing see mediterranean region mediterranean region take summer and take winter mediterranean region take summer winter okay in summer what winds are blowing mediterranean region very good northeastern trade winds in winter which winds are blowing yes westerlies in winter westerlies summer north trade winds okay now tell me the northeast trade winds are there no for example see northeast trade winds come like this you understand oh, so i'm sorry yeah northeast trade winds come like this <coughs> this is a friend this is a equator this is a uh, land this is a e europe okay northeastern trade winds come from where come from the land see here they come from the land where is rest is a very important diagram based on this diagram i'm going to explain a very important concepts called as atmospheric circulation i'll come to that okay the concept is called as atmospheric atmospheric circulation listen carefully i will take the earth in this direction see till now i have taken the earth like this equator polar area polar area now i will take the earth in this direction see this is equator this is equator this is subtropical high pressure belt this is equatorial low pressure belt this is subtropical high pressure belt and this is subpolar this is subpolar low pressure belt and friend this is polar high pressure belt and this is polar high pressure belt. you understood just i am tilting it till now i have taken vertically the latitudes now i just trying to uh, turn it this direction so easy for you to understand as well okay. let's see what's the list the western is this is the equal region the western is come from 
Motion. Vessels come from ocean, Atlantic Ocean. Westerlies are coming like this now. So they come from the ocean. So Westerlies come from come from ocean. Here, lot these trade winds come from come from land. Tell me when they come from ocean, no? Will they bring moisture? No. They bring the because any wind coming from the ocean, no? See, on the ocean there is a lot of water vapor. Why? Because there is water. On the ocean, lot of water is there, no? So because of sun rays, water vapor with the water vapor. On the land, very less. Land generally will not have much water vapor. So winds coming from the ocean, they bring lot of moisture. moisture. They are also called as moist. moisture. They are also called as wet winds. Wet. So they wet no. Whereas these northeast winds, so they come from land. When they come from land, they will be dry, dry winds. So wet winds. When wet winds come, will they cause rainfall? Or when dry winds come, they cause rainfall? Dry. Wet winds. Dry. When wet winds come, no. There is a lot of water wrapper in the in the water wrapper in the wind, so it calls rain. So there will be instead of saying rain, you can use the word precipitation because it can be waters, rainfall, snowfall, whatever precipitation. So there will be precipitation here. Dry wind, so it will be dry only. No precipitation. No precipitation. It will be hot, hot air. Okay. Now tell me. Mediterranean region, right down. Mediterranean region will have winter rains and summer dry. This is what I want to tell. Actually, this is the only thing I want to tell. The final line is: Mediterranean regions are. Mediterranean regions has winter rainfall and summers dry. I mean, dry summers and rainy winters. The, the right language is Mediterranean region will have dry summers and rainy winters. I want to tell this single line, that's why. For this single line, I have spent some time for to understand, that's all. Okay? But this concept will be understood only by those students who understand the pressure belts, shifting of the pressure belts, and the plant winds. All three should know. If you do not know shifting or winds, you don't understand this one. You have to buy this. I hope you understood those, those things. Shifting of pressure build, summer, winter, plant winds, these things, right? Now, that's why Mediterranean climate is a very interesting climate. Most of the questions will be based on, if you know, somebody wants to ask a question on climate, they will ask about Mediterranean climate only. It's very interesting. Similarly, I'll finish one more climate. We'll close it. One more climate is... <coughs> See, Mediterranean region is 35 to 40 degrees latitude. Now I am telling you 60 to 70 degrees latitude. That means if you take the earth, I am telling you this region. 60 to This has a very different kind of climate. I will tell you why. For example, here, this is Africa, this is Europe. I am telling you about climate here. See. Previous told of Mediterranean, no. Mediterranean is here. This is Mediterranean climate. Now I'm telling you about this climate. 60 to 70 degrees north. It's also called as British Columbian climate. British Columbian climate. Okay. Now, this climate is also very interesting. How? Again, you take the summer and winter. This is summer. This is winter. Summer is June. Winter is Okay. Now here, take the equator, take the equator, take the region here, this is the region I am talking about, the region, okay, the region will not change, now I will look at the winds, in summer season, the sun will be here, so all winds will go up, as all winds go goes up now, the polar pressure belt, now it will be compressed. Polar pressure belt gets compressed. And below polar will be there sub, sub polar low pressure belt. Sub polar low pressure belt. Okay. And polar high pressure belt, sub polar low pressure belt, then subtropical high pressure belt. So here, which kind of winds will blow in summers? Which kind of winds? 
This is subtropical high pressure, subpolar low pressure. Which one will move? Very good. Westerlies. Westerlies will be moving in summer season. Now come to winter season. Okay. Friends, in winter season, sun will be here. So everything will come down. So this is the polar high pressure belt. Polar. This low pressure comes down. Low pressure belt comes down. Subpolar low pressure belt. Then again, subtropical high pressure, uh, whatever. Okay. Now, what are the winds between polar high pressure belt, subpolar polar winds? Polar? Very good. We have polar easterlies. Now, I think all of us should know. Ah, no. Let us write now. So, in summer, in summer, what are the winds blowing? In winter, what are the winds blowing? <laughs> now, look at this map. Westerlies come from ocean. Easterlies come from land. land okay. Westerlies come from ocean. What are these come from? <coughs> now, as they come from ocean, they carry to so the wet and they cause very good, they call rainfall. And as they come from land, easterly is they are dry and no, no precipitation. So, now the final line is British Columbian climate will have. Rainy winters and dry, sorry, rainy summers, dry cold winters. Cold, you know why I am saying cold? Because here winds are coming from where? Winds are coming from polar region. See, winds are coming from where? Polar region. Here winds are coming from the normal subtropical only, no problem here. When they come from polar, no, very cold. The winds come from polar region, extremely cold it will be. Understand? That's why I am telling you, British Columbia climate will have. <coughs> Rainy yeah. Warm rainy summers. Warm rainy summers. Warm rainy summers and dry cold winters. This is the actual line I want to make. That's all. Actually, I thought of telling these lines directly, and I want you to figure out if I tell this line using the concepts, the shifting of pressure belts, means using those concepts, you should only come out and tell me why it will be like that. I thought of doing like that, but uh, I just told it myself. Next time I will give the statement, you have to tell me. You have to tell me why the statement is true by drawing these diagrams, whatever. You understand? Okay. Friends, you know, coming to the monsoon, monsoon also, in monsoon there are several explanations why monsoon is there. Many explanations. Means many thinkers, many scientists told many theories. Among those many theories, one theory is shifting of pressure belts only. For example, Mediterranean climate is based on what? Shifting of pressure belts. British Columbia climate based on shifting of pressure belts. Similarly, monsoon also. There are many theories of monsoon. One, two, three, four. I'll discuss. Among that one theory, one of the theories talks about shifting of pressure belts and equatorial westerlies. It's a very interesting concept. Equatorial westerlies. I'll discuss in the next class. When I come to discuss the monsoon class tomorrow, Sunday, I'll discuss the westerlies. For that, just one point I want to add. I want to tell you what is equatorial vessel. Let's see. What is this friend? This is what is this? Equatorial equatorial blue pressure belt. There, two winds are converging. These are also tropical winds, only not tropical winds, tropical northeast winds. These are tropical southeast winds. These both winds will converge to equator. So, this region can I call this region as Intertropical Convergence Zone. Intertropical Convergence Zone. Equator is also called as 
not equator i mean low pressure belt the, the low pressure belt can be equator can be up and or whatever doesn't matter that low pressure belt is there no equatorial low pressure belt it's also called as inter tropical convergence zone very important term i will use this term again and again in the monsoon when discuss the monsoon i'll tell you the importance of this one inter tropical convergence means tropical winds are converging there and rising up convergence zone okay in this the northern part this is called northern tropical convergence zone the south margin is called as southern tropical convergence zone just the name oh, everything same only okay here i have tell you something called as very important thing equatorial westerlies what are the equatorial westerlies friend this is nothing but when two winds collide no when two winds collide no collide all the winds may not go up some winds will flow there only for example as two winds collide most of the winds after collision they'll go up but some winds will start blowing like for example this is a equator when two winds collide no like this collide no most of the wind goes up but some winds will blow like this they'll blow actually they'll blow like this some winds they blow like this they are called westerlies because they come from west how are these equatorial westerlies created how when two when tropical winds are converging most of the winds rise up but some winds stay there keep flowing such winds are called equatorial westerlies and these winds actually cause monsoon one of the theories but anyhow i'll tell the theories once again but just i want to finish this one okay friends then take care see you tomorrow come at uh, 9:30 9 30 tomorrow not 11 10 30 9 30 only and i'll take i'll finish the most of the parts of climatology take a see you bye